Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the 2019 AP Microeconomics exam. This one is from set number one and it's question number two. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into the content. Are you ready? Now this question is all based on this table we've got here and it shows the marginal benefit that Dana received by consuming additional units of water and additional units of good X. We see in these numbers here, diminishing marginal utility. The law of diminishing marginal utility tells us that the additional satisfaction or benefit, also called utility, that comes with consuming more of a good decreases with each additional unit. Now, when we see these numbers here, we need to remember that utility and benefit are really the same thing. You could see either of those phrases in the AP economics exam. As we go through this question, it's important to note that I will use the terms benefit and utility interchangeably because for a consumer, the benefit of a good is also known as utility or the satisfaction that comes from consuming that good. For part A, we have to calculate Dana's total benefit for purchasing two bottles of water and one unit of good X and show our work in that calculation. The total benefit of a product comes from the sum of the marginal benefit of each unit consumed. Dana's first bottle of water is worth $24 worth of marginal benefit. The second bottle of water is worth $18 worth of marginal benefit. So let's go ahead and put those there. But then we have to add in the marginal benefit of the first unit of good X. That's $24 worth of marginal benefit. Add those three numbers together and that gives us a total benefit of two bottles of water and one unit of good X being $66. If you show your work there, you got your point. For part B, we have a new assumption that's added to this question. The price of good X is $5 and we're going to calculate the consumer surplus Dana receives if she purchases three units of good X. And again, we have to show our work. Consumer surplus, as you've learned in this unit, is the difference between a consumer's utility or benefit and the price that is paid for the product. So we're looking at the first three units of good X. There we have our marginal benefit of each of those units. Add them together and that gives us $54 worth of total benefit for those three units. So we're going to take the $54 of total benefit that Dana receives for the first three units of good X and subtract the $15 paid for those three units. That gives us a consumer surplus of $39. Again, show your work to get this point. For part C, we have a few new assumptions we have to take into consideration. The price of a bottle of water is $3. The price of good X is $6. And Dana has $30 to spend on these goods. For the first part of C, we must explain why Dana is not maximizing her benefit if she purchases two bottles of water and four units of good X. And the question tells us to use marginal analysis to do that. That means you shouldn't be looking at total benefits versus total costs. We're looking at the marginal utility or the marginal benefit and the price of the product. In order to solve this problem, we need to remember our utility maximizing rule, which is the benefit maximizing rule for consumers. The formula for that rule is right there. The marginal utility, marginal benefit, of good A divided by the price of good A should equal the marginal utility or benefit of good B divided by the price of good B. And if the two marginal utilities per dollar are equal, then you are maximizing utility as a consumer. To see why Dana is not currently maximizing her benefit, we take the $18 of marginal benefit she receives for the second bottle of water and divide it by the $3 that unit costs. That gives us six marginal utils per dollar spent. That fourth unit of good X, on the other hand, has a marginal benefit of only $6 divided by the price. And that gives us just $1 worth of marginal utility per dollar spent. And so the answer to the first portion of C is that Dana is not benefit maximizing because $6 worth of marginal benefit per dollar is greater than $1 worth of marginal benefit per dollar. Have that inequality there. and You've got yourself a point. For the second part of C, we need to identify the benefit maximizing quantities of bottles of water and good X that Dana should buy given the marginal utility we see in this chart. In order to figure that out, we need to help Dana purchase one unit at a time, selecting the highest marginal utility per dollar until all money is spent. 
Here I'm going to add the marginal utility per dollar calculations for each bottle of water and each unit of good X. The first thing Dana should buy is one bottle of water because it has eight utils per dollar, marginal benefit per dollar for that first unit. And that's the highest value she could get per dollar spent. The second thing she should buy is another bottle of water because it has six marginal utils per dollar. And that is the next highest value we see on that chart. For the next unit, we've got a tie, but luckily she can afford both of them. Four utils per dollar for a bottle of water and her first unit of good X. The next thing she should buy is another unit of good X because that is three utils per dollar. Now Dana has just $9 left to spend and she should spend it on her next bottle of water at two marginal utils per dollar and another unit of good X at again, two marginal utils per dollar. In the end, that tells us that Dana's benefit maximizing combination of bottles of water and units of good X is four bottles of water and three units of good X. Now on to the last and most difficult part of this question. We are now told that the price of good X falls down to $3. Now it's the same price as a bottle of water. And with that new information, we need to calculate the cross price elasticity of bottles of water with respect to good X. Let's remember the formula for cross price elasticity. It's the percentage change of the quantity of Y divided by the percentage change in the price of X. Now let's figure out how much Dana's quantity of bottles of water will change. Now let's put the marginal utility per dollar spent on those goods based on the new price of good X being just $3. We also have to keep in mind that Dana was previously consuming four bottles of water. Now the first two things Dana is going to buy is a bottle of water and a unit of good X because both of those goods have the same marginal utility per dollar of eight utils per dollar. And then she's gonna buy another unit of both of them, a third unit of both of them, a fourth unit of both of them, and then to spend the last $6 she has available, she will buy one more unit of water and one more unit of good X. In the end, Dana's consumption of water has changed from four bottles of water up to five bottles of water. That is a 25% increase in the quantity of bottles of water Dana consumed. We're going to divide that by the 50% decrease in the price of good X, and that gives us a negative 0.5 cross price elasticity coefficient. Second thing we need to do is identify whether these two goods are complements or substitutes based on this elasticity coefficient. Well, since we have a negative coefficient here, that means that the cross price elasticity between these two goods is inversely related. That means when the price of one goes up, demand for the other one is going to decrease and vice versa. What kinds of goods have that sort of relationship? Complements. So as soon as you've calculated this coefficient properly, identify these goods as complements and you've got your last point. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are definitely on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you want to support this channel, make sure you like and subscribe below. Then head over to reviewecon.com where there are lots of review activities and games to help you practice the skills you've been learning in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, make sure you head over to reviewecon.com and purchase the total review packet with everything you need to know for the AP microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Thank you. I'll see you next time.